Oh man. Joe here. Thanks for pushing that button again. Well, me and my buddy Sean are out here in northern Ontario, snowshoeing through powder. We've been pulling our sleds behind us for about two hours now, trying to find a good camping spot. The idea of this trip is uh, tonight we're going to tarp it. We're going to tarp camp. We're supposed to get negative, what, 25? Yeah, minus 27 maybe with the wind chill. Uh, and that's Celsius, so it's pretty pretty cold. And then, uh, so tonight we'll, we'll tarp it, and tomorrow we're going to build a Quincy. Uh, for those who don't know, a Quincy is basically an igloo. You build a big old pile of snow, hollow it out. We're gonna literally sleep in the snow tomorrow night. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Stick along. Being able to pull all your stuff behind you in a sled is very convenient in the winter time, but it's not very easy going through the thick snow in the woods, but it's a good trade off regardless. I was able to fit all of my stuff in this duffel bag as opposed, uh, just not my little stuff. I got a little, uh, Hidden Woodsman Day Rock that I have on my back, but the whole system is working out pretty well. Uh, I've used this a couple times like this, so I got a big negative 30 degree sleeping bag, and I've got a sill nylon tarp. I'm gonna set up right now. So I've got my tarp up in an A-frame configuration, and I need to stake it out. But stakes might work, but it's not gonna hold it very taut, and I need this to stay taut. So I'm gonna try with snow anchors, see how that works. Basically all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure where I want my tarp to come out to. It's right around there. I'm gonna start wrapping this and stopping it there. And then you wanna come down and in. Bury it again. <laughs> and that will freeze overnight and keep it taut. Well, she's all set up now, nice and taut. Good A-frame style, lots of coverage, lots of room underneath. Relatively flat ground. I think I'll be good. Put a, a ground sheet down, my sleeping pad, my sleeping bag, everything will work out. But now I feel like I need to go help Sean because he's been working while I've been putting up a tarp. all of the work over here like usual. <laughs> like five seconds, come on. Next time Joe begs me to go out, I might say no. This guy, he might, but he won't. You got your snowman almost built? Almost, yeah. <laughs> well, how many sections would you like? <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing, tell the folks. I'm making a big, uh, big uh, <laughs> I'm making a big fire pit here. Um, of course, in this winter, there's actually more snow than I thought there was, like I said. Look at that. Start digging. My back's sore from digging down so deep. I guess I could help. <laughs> no, you're never going to help. I know that. I know not to even bother asking. Um, so we did find some nice rocks as a backstop here. Trying to get rid of as much duff as possible. The beauty, what I really love about uh, campfires in the open in the winter, is you get to use all that snow as a bench. So I'm going to let this uh, solidify. I just walked on it, packed it down. And then I'm going to actually carve benches and tables out of it. We're going to have a great little seating area here. We might want, might not want to leave tomorrow. Okay, well, Fun. keep at it. Stop talking and do it. <laughs> yeah. Let's go get some firewood. <laughs> it's the closest we get to dueling banjos. We got the dueling of Agawas. Royal 21. Firewood time.
King in the castle, king in the castle. Look at me, I have a chair. <laughs> you can see our water on, just melting some snow. And then Sean packed in a deer backbone for us. So that bad boy is giving me a good supper. Oh, we're a little foggy. We're a little foggy now. Water on our cold fire here. So now that we're at camp and we've been walking around, we've developed these like trails where your snow we've been walking with our snowshoes. And you can see Sean walking there, how he's kind of not sinking. So it's okay to walk without snowshoes on the stuff we've already packed down. But let me show you what it's like with just boots off trail. I gotta go get some firewood and I don't feel like putting my snowshoes on. I already did this once. Oh, a chickadee. A chickadee that's acting like a woodpecker. You see him? Okay, I get distracted easily, sorry. So let's show how deep the snow just is. You can see how this could take some time to get anywhere. Walking on snowshoes isn't the most efficient either. But it's much better than struggling like this every time. Okay, here we are. Just because I know people are gonna ask, again, it's called the Boreal Saw by Agawa Canyon. The Boreal 21 by Agawa Canyon. The sunset. Oh, yeah, that's that whole no snowshoe thing. The sunset, and it's super pink in the sky. And we're trying to hike out to this point we know of, following our old snowshoe tracks, trying to get there before the before it all fades out. And we didn't make it in time. Really needed that exercise. Well, I'm really glad like, we did that. You put off all that food. Oh yeah, all that water. This will be beauty tomorrow. This is where we're planning on setting up for our Quincy. Big open area right here, so lots of snow to fall, so we can gather it easily. Great view. It's gonna be pretty epic. Grease drip. Come on. I think I'm just make up some rice tonight to go with this deer backbone. Seems like a nice combo. Usually when you're in restaurants, backbone comes with Uncle Ben's rice. <laughs> That's how you know when you're a classy joint. Yeah. Yeah. I think I got a little too much water in this one though. I'm gonna put the seasoning packet in right now. Sometimes I wait till later. Feeling a little dangerous today. A little danger. She's hot. All right, some backbone, <laughs> sand spinal cord. <laughs> Would yeah. you guys like to see the spinal cord? I wouldn't give up the spinal cord. I'm <laughs> doing that for myself. So, hmm, that's smoky. Yeah, good. That's pretty good. Okay. Eat that, and I got my full pot of rice. 
Things are looking up. Things are looking good. I'm ready for bed. Um, just melting the last of my snow. I'm gonna boil it up, pour it into my hot water bottle. I'll change my clothes and put that at my feet as I get into bed. And uh, probably be pretty toasty. <laughs> Air <brip. sighs> Good night, folks. I'll see you in the morning. You gotta love seeing the sun on a cold morning. Good morning, folks. Had a great night's sleep, slept for about 10 hours. Now we're up, just stoking the fire a bit, grab some breakfast, and we're gonna move on our way. So this trip, and uh, any other cold weather trip I'm gonna be doing, I like to bring two pairs of gloves. Um, by cold weather, I mean if it's gonna get down negative 15 Celsius or colder. Uh, so my leather gloves are good for, for just wearing as I'm hiking or collecting wood or really doing whatever I can do with these but they tend to get very wet and then cold and freeze or you can you can warm them up and, and melt them out by wearing them throughout the day but first thing in the morning you don't want to do that who wants to put their hand in a freaking ice block but these are some old Canadian surplus mitts that I've had for I don't know maybe 10 years or something like that and um, so they're super loose they're leather on the outside and they have the wool liner. They might be called chopper gloves if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, working around the fire in the morning, anything really I can do with these. My hands are together like this, like a mitt in there, so they're staying warm. Um, yeah, I can fit my, my battery for my camera in there to keep warm too if I need to. So yeah, two mitt system seems to work out good for me. We're just gearing up now. Got my Hid Woodsman Day Rock. I'm going to throw gear for the day in, some lunch, my Arc'teryx hard shell jacket, um, and my snow pants. Today we're wearing snow pants because we're building that Quincy. And we're going to be laying in the snow, digging in the snow, a lot of stuff like that. You got to be geared up properly for it. Um, Sean's actually got a pretty cool story on his website about how when he was 17, uh, and building the Quincy and uh, wasn't geared up properly and how it almost ended badly. I can put a link at the bottom in the description if you guys want to read it. It's a really interesting read actually. I highly recommend checking it out. So, just gonna get my snowshoes on and start trucking that way. It's a beautiful day, the sun's out. I'm looking forward to it. We made it to our location where we want to build. You can see why we want to do it here. Um, it's cooler up here because of, it's a bit windier, but inside the Quincy it'll be totally fine. The idea of the Quincy is the snow is a super good insulator. In the shaded part of the woods, the snow is a lot softer. It hasn't had the sun baking on it. So it's a nice dig in here.
we're more or less happy with our mound now. We're just kind of shaping it and packing the snow down. We've got to let it sit too. So let it sit for a few hours. So I think we'll take a lunch break and hang out for a bit. It's lots of work, man. Imagine us, two able-bodied men with enough gear, food, and water to do this kind of stuff. Imagine if you needed to do this. We're doing this for fun. This is our enjoyment. Imagine if you needed to do this and you didn't have anything, because that's when you would need to do it. And the exertion, we're uh, like overheating like crazy, but yet it's a uh, stiff wind. As soon as you stop, you get cold. It's hard to regulate your heat. So we're gonna have to uh, make sure we strip off when we're doing the hard work and bundle right back up again as soon as we're not. Yeah, it's a uh, lot, lots of, <laughs> lots of layering on and off for sure. I'm hungry. The next thing we have to do is get sticks and stick them into the Quincy. They're all going to be about six inches long, and that way, when we're digging the Quincy out, we'll know when to stop so that we leave our wall about six inches. Uh, I've done it a foot before. We'll give ourselves six inches of snow pack as insulation so we don't go too thin. So they don't have to be anything substantial, you know what I mean? It could be just twigs like this broken off at about six inches and stabbed in. So it's not rocket science. Pretty straightforward and the easiest part of the Quincy building process. So we got to let her sit for a couple hours there. Even though we brought our lunch out this way, I think we're gonna go back down and hang out at camp. Um, less wind down there, and there's chairs to sit on. So maybe we'll go for a hike or something in between. Well, this sits. Maybe not. Maybe not. Nice. Look at that clear water. Is it? No. <laughs> Far from it. it. Oh, you're more than welcome to some. <laughs> yes. Can you guys hear that? There's a woodpecker right above us. Oh, there he is. He wasn't affiliated. <coughs> Harry probably. Probably. So it's a nice day, man. It's, it's starting to be a nice day. Oh, there's birds singing. Sun's shining. I got uh, this cool little system. I got a ton of leaf litter in the bottom of my, my pot, right? You, that happens when you're when you're melting snow. There's just tons of crap in the snow. But if you do a little ladle action with a little cup, you're debris free. Just trying to warm my pita up so it doesn't crack when I open it. Oh, I might actually warm my whole sandwich up, do a little melt. Should maybe do something about that. Yeah, I think so. You actually left. Me. 
It is less work. It's a different kind of yeah. arm thing too, so yeah. you know when you switch it's yeah. not so bad. It's time to go back up to our mound of snow that we're gonna call a home for tonight. It's been two and a half hours. We ate a lot of food, melted a lot of snow. Melting snow is an ongoing process for water. So, filled up our water bottles, got our, all the gear we need. We can walk on the, the packed snow now because we've done a couple trip passes by on it with our, our snowshoes. So it's all easy walking. Easy walking. So the purpose behind leaving it sit for a couple hours is supposed to solidify. It's pretty, pretty soft still. So we're both gonna, we're planning on sleeping lengthways with the door right in front. I'm gonna put the door in the middle and try to dig down beneath the snow to get in. So we'll have a little dip and in. That hasn't set up all that great. That candle will get, have to light something in there probably to ice it over faster. No doubt. Yeah. We're going to use a lot of the snow from the inside to build up a, an outer wall, kind of have it bend around, maybe kind of cool. Let's go on in and take a peek. Take a little gander, shall we? Ah. Pretty roomy. Pretty roomy. Oh yeah. What do you guys think? We don't want too much room in here because we want to keep it um, warm with our body heat, right? So if you had a bunch of dead air space, it would make no sense. It's got about a foot above our heads. Our feet are relatively close to the top. And yeah, there's enough room for Mr. Sean and I. Excellent. Yeah, that's cozy. Yeah. Here you can see the sticks that we put in to know when to stop, so they're just markers, and they're all over. So we've got probably about anywhere from six to eight inches um, of snow on the outsides because some 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 sticks are bigger than others. Uh, yeah, but it's like quite a bit warmer in here. There's no wind at all in here, obviously, 
I am laying directly on the snow, so that's not great. So I carried my sleep system over here. I got my tarp, my sleeping pad, sleeping bag, my Wobie from Malcolm. Now I just gotta stuff it all in and set it up. Okay, a little snowy. So first things first, my tarp's going down as a ground sheet. Then next, my Thermarest Neo Air sleeping pad. All right, the build is done and I'm chilled. I took off one, two, three layers of warmth and I had on just this barrier. It doesn't add any warmth. It's a good windbreak. But now that we're done, it's definitely time to switch back as I am just a bit chilled. You can see the last of the sun just hitting the tops of the mountains. Give a nice golden glow. We're living like kings now. We got two chairs carved in the back side of the wall with the snow that we took out from inside the Quincy. Sean just whipped up a Swedish tor torch. A little ambient light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna hang out here for a while, watch the sun go down. It's real peaceful. I, I was sitting here and we weren't talking at all for I don't know, a good 20 minutes. It was silent. Just sitting here appreciating the winter camping. You know, th that's what that's what I really like about winter camping is the just the peace and the silence. Like if I stopped talking. Yeah, which doesn't happen often, as you know. You don't hear anything except for Sean's witty banter. <laughs> so smoke generator, keep the bugs down. Yeah, that's good. Mosquitoes are bad this time of year. <laughs> Always be prepared. <laughs> but did you die? <laughs> <laughs> There's a nice... Uh, Waterfall up over that ridge right there and in, in the fall or summer actually in the fall I did it with my wife walked in like an hour and we tried like just cross that pond and you know <laughs> These conditions are just so exhausting. I think we, we uh, The consensus was that it takes about four times longer three to four times longer Right now with snowshoes going through the deep snow and pulling that sled. Don't forget that that was a big part of it And we're off trail you know what I mean? There's trees blocking everywhere. There's there's, there's saplings that we're getting uh, hung up on. So, yeah, just uh, a lot longer to travel in the winter time. But you don't, you don't necessarily need to go as far in the winter time either. Yeah, most places look the same in the winter anyway. It's all covered in snow. Getting pretty late. We're getting pretty hungry. We're gonna hike down back to camp and uh, hang out there by the fire, get warm, eat some food. Probably hang out there the rest of the night. And then when it comes time to go to bed, we're gonna hike up back up to the ridge and uh, crawl in the old snow cave. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely bring you in there with us when we go in to show how, like us with our stuff in there, how comfortable it can be. So yeah, off to make some food. My sausages are thawed. The only downfall with this, I'm gonna have some sausage water, but I think I can deal with it. All right, so. Those will grill up nicely now. And I'm super hungry, so this is gonna be good. It's a big meal. It's gonna be hot and gassy in that cleansy with Joe. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Nice and crispy. So hungry from doing all that work today, man. It's feeling real good in this hot water. I'm just drinking hot water straight out of my, my billy cam. The sausage water <laughs> feels really, really good. It's warming me from the inside. I'm feeling very good right now. It was chilly. Chilly when we came over here. We got the fire going pretty good now. It'll be a good night. Let me have a couple sips of some whiskey later on. It's amazing how much a fire can really do for you out here. 
It's like negative 27 degrees Celsius right now uh, with the wind chill. And we're sitting in the snow, literally on a snow chair next to a fire, and I'm totally comfortable. Um, I think it's about time for a little adult beverage. <laughs> This is a fun trip. I haven't uh, haven't had a proper winter trip in a while. Tell me when. Good. <laughs> Here we are. That's a Joe pour. Yeah. That's a Joe pour. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a good, real, legit winter camp in a while. This is the first one. This is the first of this year. This is the first real, legit winter camp. I think we can cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Cold. Yeah, she's a little cold, that whiskey. And there was a point of doing this trip. There was a point of doing this video, right? My last video, I was in my hot tent, and I have plans for my next trip. There's gonna be a bunch of people in a couple hot tents. So this was more of a cold camping, build a Quincy kind of style video, just to mix it up. I don't wanna put out too many similar videos in a row but I will be using my hot tent next trip. It should be a good trip. We're gonna have five guys. Sean will be there. Um, Dustin from the first season of Alone is gonna be there. So that'll be pretty fancy. Buddy Mike and Doug. You guys haven't seen Doug in a long time. Lots of people have been asking for Doug. We're gonna get old Douglas on board for this trip. I think basically Sean and I are just gonna hang out here for another hour or so. And hike up back over to the Quincy. I'll probably check in with you then. And my batteries do not like this cold. Grandma, okay. It's like minus 100. <laughs> minus, we're gonna say minus 30 Celsius. I can't even focus. My stuff's all jacked. Okay. <laughs> we're in the Quincy. Maybe you can see. We're a little foggy. And, uh,. Cause it's so hot in here. It's so warm. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. And we're loving it. It's <laughs> it's uh no we're it's, it's a little cozy. <laughs> a couple more people in here would be I think a dog at the foot of our bed would be alright, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's, we built it a little small, so it's a little low. Not bad for length, I guess, but it's a little low and uh, we're making do. So the only problem is a little bit sloped. We, <laughs> we put it on. Good night. Yeah, good night. Good night. <laughs> there we are. Good morning. <laughs> 7.30. I slept like a tank. What about you? Absolutely, yeah. Lots warmer than the first night. This uh, Quincy did its job insulation-wise. There's a nice crust over top of us. Uh, we, last night, I didn't talk about our show, but Sean lit an Esbit tab in here. Not while we were in here. Um, we stayed and poked a hole for, for ventilation and stuff um, just to crust it over. Uh, candle, candle usually does that job, but neither of us had one dropping the ball big time. Uh, yeah, great night's sleep, warm. The Quincy was a success, and I am ready to get out of here and get some food. Mm -hmm, me too. As you can see, Sean's got all his gear out of the Quincy. I'm just kind of tearing my sleep system out right now. Had a great trip, really warm sleep last night. We got to hike over back to our other gear, pack that camp up, hike like two hours out, <laughs> get to our car and drive home. So I think I'm gonna end it here. I had a really fun time. Thanks guys, that was a great trip. Thanks Joe, I had an awesome time and uh, looking forward to the next uh, next trip. For sure, yeah, stick around guys, there'll be more. Yeah, Have a good one.